Welcome YouTube, it's Akina from Lufu TCG, and today I'm joined with uh, Fortune. Hello. Yeah, our editor. So today, we're actually going to be watching, with you guys, um, Zorga vs Yuji, because the, uh, we uh, sadly the audio was lost for the video and we're going to have to commentate over it. Yeah, uh, we're back on remote fights again, uh, yeah. but that won't stop us from hopefully bringing you guys some great fights. Exactly, yeah. Um, one more thing, we've got a very low amount of people who are actually subscribed to watch, so could just uh, yeah. help us out there. We help us here, yeah. It's completely free, you know. Yeah. It's just a button, but just a button press away to help us out, so... Alright, let's get into the match. Yeah, let's, get, let's go into the match. Oh. Right, so it looks like Petra's rolling. Yes. Oh, it was rolling. So, oh, it's a low roll from Rotex, so... Yeah. Oh, also, um, so these are a bit unconventional decks. We actually have double Alchemagic versus Eugene. Oh, double Alchemagic. Okay, well, this yeah. is going to be a very interesting fight then. Yeah. Petra's rolled higher, so Petra's is going to go first. And uh, we'll see how that impacts the, the game in the long run. Yeah. I think as well, like, these decks aren't common, but these two are, like, so dedicated to their decks. Like, the, these are the decks that they've been playing in tournament. <laughs> yeah, yeah. These are, these are, like, tournament decks that I've uh, been playing a lot. Petras has tested a lot for Alka Magic. Mm. And we all know Rotex has been playing Eugene since, he, since day one, so. Yeah, actually, recently, he's been, he has had, like, a bit of a revival of his interest in uh, Eugene. Yeah, so that's pretty good. So we're just going to see how he plays out. So the ranker chain also sits onto a good start, drawing two. Yeah, of course, you can get the order. Yeah. So it looks like he's playing the what's called Zorga right line, which w makes sense. Mm. Makes sense. It makes sense, yeah. It's easy, it's like easy, like draw power. Yeah. And so I'm going for the rush. Swing in immediately with his Vanguard and calling something down. The only one used to go with Brigard first, so he goes Vanguard first. Yeah, I guess, I mean, he plays fronts from what I've seen, so I guess he was, like, thinking he, he might get a front there. Yeah, that's a, that's, that's, yeah, that's a really good point, yeah, as well. If you're rushing and you play fronts, swing, uh, it's a good idea to swing with your Vanguard first, actually. Yeah. Actually, guarding early, like, it, it, okay, obviously, like, it's good not to take the damage early, but also, it fills up his drop zone, <laughs> so it's like a two for one. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And he's using that order, so he got the order back that he ditched, uh, but he yeah. still needs it in drop zone because he wants to alpha magic it, and he has to get the same thing once. So. Yeah. And he, and he does, he hits, uh, he hits another condensation, which is off the Hendrina mill, which is fantastic. Yeah. Especially for his deck. You can see, you can see the card right there in his drop zone. Yeah, so unfortunately he lost one persona ride, but he got a crit, so he's, he's not yeah. in a bad spot. Yeah. He pushes two damage off to uh, Rotanks at the start. Takes uh, Ritter. And I think that's his actual new tech with his Blade Mason techs. Yeah, the He's been one calls a the great Blade Mason. Yeah. yeah. And he actually decides to take the damage, but get the heal. Very, uh, very fortunate yeah. for him there. Saving yeah. the hand. Pretty risky. Is it risky to send to three before game two? But yeah, I think I don't know how this turns out, but it will be. A, it would have been a very different game if he was on three already. Yeah. He still has a critical trigger. That's another trigger gone, actually. Yeah. Unfortunate. Yeah. See what he's gonna so do. So he moves, he moves his um, regard down. That's also when I think the great one that he called is also a. Uh, it's uh, a recent sort addition. Of to it. I think it's a recent addition. Yeah. Oh, actually, so this here, it's Metro tie the one in the same column, but because they're on remote fight, um, the columns were a bit unclear. Yeah. So on on Rotex's screen, that was his same column, even though on yes. the video there it was different. Yeah. So he still has another trigger. So. Four. <laughs> It's less triggers than he's going to call out with Eugene, but you That's know. That's true. That's true. He's going to get the right here, the dragon. The, the dinosaur dragon, which is an amazing card. Yes. Also, uh, with the Tanya that we saw earlier, if he calls another one, the fact that he soul charged all these triggers means that when he soul blasts them out, it's going to be uh, a target for Tanya, essentially. That is true, yes. Extra Farke, extra Farke with boosters. They are boosters in uh, itself, and Farke is an extra card from hand, and less cards that he has to use. Yep. And so there, there, there he is. The garden person. There he is. Here we are. So the double Alka Magic guy. He doesn't so, have many cards in hand. This is a little worrying. Yeah. Zorga has prides itself on having a relatively larger hand. Yeah. But because um how this deck works, it's less about hand size because Zorga you can call things from drop and recur things as well with the grade two. Mm. But the grade three does not have any recursion, so it's all like has mm. to rely on Alka Ar Magic for its recursions and stuff. So. Pops a Hendrina, but the thing is, he's milled three condensation. Oh, okay, there's the fourth one, I think. Yeah. So, I doubt we're going to be seeing more condensation this game. 
Yeah. But at least it means that he saves on the hand. Like, one hand to call two things is, like, the value that you need at this point. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And he doesn't also pay any of the soul, card, soul blast costs, which is pretty good. And he goes double yeah. Hendrina. Hendrina's mill... Oh, that's unfortunate. Oh, okay, that's unfortunate. That's but, you know... not what you want to see. Yeah. But he, he, he does go for the double mill. That's a... That drops on his... A lot of triggers there, yeah. There's a lot that that drops on is looking relatively large. Yeah. He's looking it doesn't look like to be wanting to want uh have a close part of a long game. Mm. And these Hendrinias are 15k each, is that right? Because uh yes. plus five from Constitution gives plus five K yep. for each. So these are pretty good numbers, I think it's a great two, I think. And look at the heal trigger. trigger. He does get the heal off, which is good. And he heals in order and to drop. Very, yeah, very useful. Which is very nice, yeah. And he gives it to the Vanguard. Oh, okay, so I, I think that was a true to pass that yes. he didn't want to fully commit on. Oh, sorry, mm -hmm. he did want to fully commit on. He didn't, unfortunately, didn't get both the triggers. Yeah. So it's 50 to the hand, and 50 to the Vanguard. And that's another one of his uh, new spice that Red Hands are lost. Mm. It's like he, he's putting all these new cards just for them to go mm -hmm. to damage zone. <laughs> yeah, I know. Quite overguarding there with the front trigger, though. It's a bit, a bit of an overguard, but I guess overguard, he didn't want to be but... pushed to 4 so early. Yeah, and especially because like a 15k means a two card card. Yeah. In my case, and yeah. we've seen we've seen that nectar order in the drop zone that will give his units crit very soon because he has been milling so much. Yeah. So not sure as, not sure as, as much as we have, as much as he's got a low hand size, he's got low damage as well. Yes. And a pretty stacked drop zone. Yes. Like ev it, everything is slowly coming together for him, mm. which is actually like if you look at this deck on paper, it looks so. I guess like situational, like you have to have the yeah. right setup. But he's he's funny to play. playing it in a way that is just it it's going well for him. Yeah. And calling the tribash, I I consider this to be instead of Eugene, I consider tribash to be Rotex's favorite card. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <he laughs> if you, if you ever talk to enough. Rotex in person, you you know how much he loves those dinosaurs. Yeah. Alright, so there's the no, good reason to five. Five. Yep. And he's going to be calling four, even though he has a lot of big pretty large field already. That was Only actually out of those. I think what what you said earlier, where he saw a lot of triggers in his soul charges, so yeah. it makes sense that now he's uh he's not uh hitting as many in his top five. Yeah. Top four. Hmm. He's he's considering a lot. Definitely looks like, yeah. like the time he has to play. And but he puts four into soul, so he sold out his soul blasted five to put uh, three into soul, my mistake. Not bad. Oh, and he gets the zero off the Tanya. I understand, I understand. Uh, yeah. Okay. He's still gonna have three attacks, so. Yes. Because because that damage was just, I think, so good. Oh, we mentioned Petra's hand is low, but Rotanks is, is not much to. Yeah, it's getting lower too. Yeah. He's really put a lot into this turn, I think. We talked about, like, Soul Tanya making, making it less of a commitment to call things, mm. but he is really low. I mean, at the, at the end of the day, he essentially... Oh, okay, that over is going to replace his hand. That is, <laughs> that is a very good time for an over-trigger. That is a fantastic time for an over-trigger, when you, right when your hand is low. Yeah, and Dragon Empire one as well. Uh, it, what's it called? Yeah. Dragon Empire and Keta are both ones that give you extra cards in hand, essentially. Yeah. So, <laughs> he just gets the whole so dice box. It was a dice box on there. <laughs> Don't forget as well, the Eugene actually has a critical as well from Tribash. So, this is a very, very scary attack. Like, that just what, has to go up. What I was song, saying I before was like his entire Eugene skill essentially just got him one Tanya. So, the fact that he's making up so much hand here now is, is huge for him. Yeah. Oh, one damage. Tribash is only end to end battle. Yes. Okay. So it's not too damaged. So this is a uh, like, very, very big swing. Million, yeah. yeah. Oh, is this swing a recall? Oh, never mind. Was he over the head? No, it's swing Oh, I think Petros is like, oh yeah, yeah, swing this guy, swing this guy. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing a little psych out there. <laughs> I thought I had to drop. So all, all of a sudden, Petros' hand seems rather low. Yeah. That's... And damage is high. It's the, the position's have messed the reverse, and that's just sure to show what uh, an overtrigger could really do for the game. Hmm. He does yeah. have the Persona right though, so it's, it's a good start to this turn. Us. I guess it, it's just a matter of what orders he has in hand now because we've seen so many condensation out that yeah. I don't believe they have a way to get orders back. Oh, but he has Ooh. the Nectar. He has the Nectar, so he drops down the heal trigger, so he knows he's not going to live next turn. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 
I mean, after an over trigger like that, like that was just yeah. perfect timing for a tanks. I think that was 16 drop as well. Yeah, so it's a very large drop. These these two you know as well because of the archmage. He basically did it twice. Yeah, so it, it his entire board just becomes so scary. Yeah, especially considering with opponents are upset around as well, and they two both have crit. So mm. double critical here could actually put Rotting in a very very precarious position. Honestly, if I'm if I'm Petras, I want either double critical here or I don't want any critical. Yes. To either, either choke him up for all oh, that heal. And it's actually heal, though. Very useful. It's very useful. Hopefully though, uh soon enough to keep him in the game. And a front. And just a front oh, okay. okay, well it's not no trigger, but he takes the but Rotex takes the damage, so all these both of them are lethal now. That's actually like all that hand that Rotex got, it it has to go into this. Yes. Because this is, is this is going to be almost a near hand wipe. Okay, he does Unless have the course. PG for this one. That's good. So that's that's two cards out of his hand though. True. And if he has a he has another PG, yes he does. Okay, so it, he didn't lose too many cards, but the fact that he lost two PGs means that another Nectar turn could be lethal. Yes. So he goes to the Persona right here, and this could... This could spell a game for Petraz. Or another, another try bash. Oh, he's thinking. He's thinking. This is actually a bit of a... Oh no, because uh, the Grade 1 is Act, so he can clear the board pretty easily, but then he would be out of resources. Yeah. Which is something that Rotanks actually said, um about this deck is that compared to older Eugene, it feels a lot tighter on his resources. Hmm, especially if you're considering Titania. Yes. The indicator there for Persona, right? He's... He's okay, sorry, I think that was just a little mix-up on the skills there. He did, um, yeah. But he does leave the heal trigger on board, it's looking like he's going to battle phase, and the uh, great to a standing. Mm, yes. Okay, so this is honestly, like, he, he may be low on resources, but the field is so scary that he might just finish it this turn. Yes. How does the guard's attack? And it goes with 20k shield, and another 15k. So this is putting him at, I think, let's tell it so he's at some 20. So it checks the trigger, but checks the critical trigger. And this this could be lethal. Yeah, yeah these regards are, are quite, quite big. Yeah. I'm just gonna take the first one, then take the um the last one. But Rotate's finally can swing that. Mm. So he's swinging with the two crit unit here. The two crit here, yeah. Rotate's checking his draw. I think he's doing it. It's only a good sign. I think yeah, oh, he just takes it. A draw trigger? Draw trigger, yeah, and gives the power to the Vanguard, draw. And last check, and he does get the heal. Look at that. Look at that. I mean, I guess all that milling, as long as you're not milling a heal, you're more likely to check the heals you have left in death. That's true, yeah, it's deck thinning, but it's deck thinning as long as you don't pull a trigger. Oh, and that Tanya column, that only hit, what was that, 30? So it couldn't even, couldn't even hit Vanguard. Yeah, it couldn't even hit, yeah. It ended the turn. So it's like a pseudo over trigger, I guess you could say. Yeah. And that's just very, like... Oh, that's also, Petra's replenish is, deck is small, but that is the hand is not replenished because of the drop trigger. Yes. So if he has another persona right here, I'm very fearful for Rotanks, who already lost two of his PGs on a prior turn. Yes. That being said, he has been very clean on his PGs, like not in, like not calling mm. them out through any effects or anything. Yes. So I guess down to, obviously either they're in the deck or they're in the hand, and the depending on that will probably affect the mm. outcome of this game. So he doesn't go into the persona right, so it doesn't happen. Or but. That Oh, they do have oh, a way to oh, oh, oh. grab all Look at this, okay. That is, that's quite good, actually. <laughs> yeah. What a, what a card. 5, 10, 15, 20. Is that 25 drop zone? <laughs> I mean, I guess it makes sense, but you saw how small that deck was. He calls critical. Oh, so he calls the, he calls the front over the critical oh. trigger. He loses 1k power, but he gets more power from this. I see, so he must have had 24 in drop zone, and that put him to 25. Yes. Alright, there's the double nectar again. And especially considering when, like, 20, when you put it, when you compare a 4k and a 5k, they both are, they're not, they're not magic numbers against, uh, they're both pretty good numbers anyway against 13k. Yeah, at the end of the day, unless you have another unit in the same column, it won't matter. Yes. He does leave one card in his hand, though. I wonder, like, that probably has to be an order, then, if he's not committing at this point. Yeah. It's either, yeah. I, I would think so as well. Because e even if it's a PG, I'm dropping that as a booster. <laughs> mm. 
So now, uh, Rotex is looking for a trigger count on the um, critical triggers or anything that gives a critical. Yeah, because so obviously, it's it's raw because those he can't take those regards. Yes, he cannot take those regards. So Vanguard, Vanguard is only are completely massive. Vanguard's only thirteen, but we've seen we've seen how uh, Petra has trigger lock this game. Like it's very possible that he could just whip out a few triggers. Yeah. Another like um. Another interesting point about the one card in hand is that it could also be a, a critical trigger. Critical? Although oftentimes, they won't actually, a person won't call it a critical trigger if they want to bait your opponent to overguarding to make a mistake. Oh, I see, I see. I oh, guess so it's one less out in public, in public knowledge. Yeah. 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 That, that's actually, that could be a smart, a smart player right here. Yeah. But he does have quite a few triggers out. Mm. I that do also sense. think though, but that's an order, because as well, 5k plus 13 would hit, would hit 18. Yes. And he's more card to guard anyway. Yes. So, I do think it's an order. Rotex here counting, like, counting shield failure. It looks like he has at least one PG, just based on how he yes. set up his hand. So he's going to go two pass here. And no trick, there was the no Persona triggers. Ride. There was the Persona Ride, that, that would have sent Kim to him since the game for him. Yeah, this is looking. It is looking like it's all. It's all Rotanks' game to take. He intercepted the Tanya. That makes sense. Losing a bit of power, but if, if you have to live, you have to live. Yes. Yeah. Oh, he didn't have a PG. He just hard guards it. All right. That's who he rips. All right. So Petra rips out most of the cards in Rotanks' hand. That's quite terrifying. If he got even one front trigger there, that might have just been the game. Or the Persona Ride, the Persona Ride would have had the game too. That's true, that is true. Hmm. Are we also have a strike check, and I don't think he's out, he has finally heals left. Yeah, he's already healed two, three times this game. Hmm. So it's... And he's called one down too, so... True, true. Yeah, looking like it's... takes the last damage, and look at that game, game over. Yep. So, thank you for watching this fight. Yeah, hope you enjoyed the commentary, and I hope you enjoyed the fight.